Guys, this is the seven millionth video that I'm making on the principle of moments because for some reason we're still struggling to understand the very basics about this. If you've watched every video on that I've made on section 4.4, um, especially one video, you'll see, do you see that, that equation there, that formula, M M O is equal to fx times y minus fy times x. I told you very explicitly in the one video that you you should not memorize this formula, okay? Because this formula is specifically related to this one. <coughs> it's obviously got some generic truth to it, but the one thing that's confusing a lot of you is the fact that um, if you look at this figure and you look at this formula, um, in this case they're taking clockwise moments as positive and anti-clockwise moments as negative. Okay? That's why I don't want you to memorize formula. I want you to take each problem on its merit. Remember, what is the principle of moments? This is now the 7,000th time we're saying this. Was it the 7 millionth time? I forget. Okay, the moment of a force, look at that, uh, the italics, the moment of a force about a point is equal to the sum of the moments of the components of the force about that point. So that's what's actually happening. So if we take a look here, we've got this force, okay, and this force, if we draw the, the extend the, the, mo the line of action, there's the moment arm, that force times that distance gives us a clockwise moment, okay? We've discussed this a lot on how to determine this, but if you cannot determine that D directly, then you break it up into its X and its Y components, and then this FY component um, will have this, this X moment arm, and the FX component will have the Y moment arm, okay? So what you can see here is that you are going to have two moments. Now, this fx, this fx causes a clockwise moment, and the fy causes an anti-clockwise moment. If we would use our normal convention of saying anti-clockwise is positive, then what we should have here is we should have minus fx times y plus fy times x. All they've done over here is they've said that clockwise is positive. Actually, they haven't even said that, really. But perhaps this is what's confusing everyone. Um, all they're saying is... All they're saying here, guys, is that... is that this moment due to that force is the opposite sign of that of the moment due to that force okay but guys honestly honestly please i begged you in the previous video please do not memorize this formula please do not memorize this formula all we're doing it's very straightforward all we're doing is you're taking that force you're breaking it up into two forces okay and now you treat each force on its merit what kind of moment is that force causing? That force is causing a clockwise moment. And if we choose anti-clockwise as positive, then that would be a negative moment. Then we look independently at this force. This force is causing an anti-clockwise moment, which according to um, the right-hand rule convention is positive. Okay? So I'm, I'm really pleading with you guys. Please do not memorize this. Please, look at each force on its merit and determine whether each force is clockwise or anti-clockwise. Then based on your, on your convention, which is the right-hand rule, then you say whether it's a negative or a positive, okay? So I'm just not sure how, much, how many more videos to make on this because if you're not getting it by now, then there's a real problem, guys. And you maybe just need to come and see me directly or see one of the lecturers, okay? Sorry for this very sober and serious video, but if you're not getting it by now, you have a serious problem.
Okay? You've, you've attended all the classes, you've attended the ADUs, and you've now had multiple videos on this. And if you're still not understanding it, you have a very, very big problem. And you, you need to come and you need to seek some medical advice. No, I'm joking. You need to seek some special, um, special uh, consultation, okay? All right. Cheers, guys.